Hi everyone, welcome to the Inspiring Minds podcast. Fadi Ghani is currently the man behind Morgan International as a dynamic founder and CEO. With over 26 years experience in training and education field, Fadi manages the company's global operations in 32 locations across the Middle East, Canada, Europe and India. Today, I want to give you the opportunity to hear how it all started and managed to stay. Fadi, nice to have you here with us. Pleasure to be here. Tell me, how did this story came to reality? Well, uh, it's a funny story, actually. I was a student in Canada. Uh, I was a major in international business. I was a recession. I couldn't find a job, so I said, okay, I'll do my... And there was a demand for accountants back then. Said, let me do it. And uh, I wanted to do my CPA. And back then in Canada, one university used to offer that certification. Mm -hmm. I went to that university and they said, sorry, we need 40 students to open the class. And I had my contacts over there said, what if I get you 40 students? Would you open the class for me? And they, uh, they said, yes. Unfortunately, I was not able to. I got them 35 students. And then I had to go back to the U.S. and study. And while studying, I saw a lot of international candidates attending the course. And how that's how the idea came. I should start a CPA training in the Middle East. What was that feeling about when you saw international students coming to all the way to the state to do the course and then the test, right? Well, the feeling, first of all, I was working as an auditor. Mm-hmm. And I was interacting with a lot of uh, business owners back then. And I've always had the gut, like, this is not where I want to be. Okay. I want to be, and I was looking for an opportunity. And uh, that opportunity, when I saw international candidates, and I was doing the calculation in my head, mm-hmm. how much is costing them to travel all the way from the U.S., they have to take time off from their work. It's not easy if you're an auditor and have to take off six months and study. So the idea came along and said, well, why don't I uh, try my luck with that? And I always didn't want to be the typical employee. I wanted my freedom Mm -hmm. and uh, being able to make my own decisions. So it started from there. Of course, it started very small. I got the idea. I emailed the head office in the U.S. We started talking with them and Lebanon, where is Lebanon, out of the whole world. And eventually we were able to convince them, give us the license to start. So we started small, very small in Lebanon And from there, uh, the whole thing started. And how long it took you to feel that you are no longer small? I will say we had a very good success. You know, when you start small, Mm. it's easy to grow. So our first operation one in Lebanon, it started very small. I was teaching, handling administration. I was doing everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, We started in Lebanon, but we grew up fast. I think when we reached the level of four to five offices and we didn't worry about anymore are we able to pay the expenses that's when we saw the masses coming so it was after around i would say three years where we were settled in major markets and that's when we started feeling that yes we have a potential we're growing Mm. we're not small anymore we're mid-size and that's where we had to uplift all the resources I started the company, I was at the age 23. Nice. I had only two years of experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, We started at the age 23, and uh, I used actually to be shy to say I'm a shareholder or I'm a CEO. At the age 23, I always had in mind, they're not going to take me seriously. They're going to think I'm more working for this uh, small company to put myself as a CEO mm-hmm. title. If you were to speak about um, entrepreneurial values and principles that one must have to grow and to uh, expand their fe- their idea, what would that be? I would say, first of all, you have to believe in yourself. Okay. You have to find uh, a concept or an idea that you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. Something you like to do, it's very important mm-hmm. because if you don't like what you're doing, you're not going to be successful. True. The other thing is, I would say, you have to be honest with yourself and you have to be honest with your partners and with the clients. Okay. You really need to, once you start and people join you, you really need to present that leadership. And I think 
having trust with the people that you work with is is the most important being very transparent and i think if i look at my success or the company's success is that we try to put that value from the start mm-hmm. uh, where everything is transparent open communication with clients with suppliers uh, we even sometimes when i'm dealing with suppliers i shouldn't be saying certain things mm-hmm. it works against me but I feel that when you tell them that, they appreciate this. We're always hesitant. It's a risk that we are taking. Uh, and better to do it young than when they're in a later stage in their life where they're married with children and a lot of responsibilities. When you take that jump, and if things do not work, you can rect- rectify that. You're young. You don't have a lot of responsibilities. If they don't do it and they always have yeah, it. Yeah, what is the back- cost? What is the cost of not doing and following your intuition and that passion, right? They're going to always regret it. Yeah. It's, it's not only material. Mm-hmm. It's the idea that they could have been successful. I always say, take the jump, do it, but think about it. Like, just don't go blindly. Just do a bit of homework about it. Yeah. How much time you're going to give yourself. Uh, you don't want to be spending 10 years trying to make it or not. Yeah. Say, so give yourself a year. Try it. See if it works. Talk to your friends. Talk to colleagues. Talk. Uh, have a mentor trying to uh, advise you. And take the jump. When you take the jump and you do the, your calculation, it's not as risky as people think it is. And even if it fails... It's a learning curve. You become, you will have the mindset mm-hmm. of an entrepreneur and which if you want to go back to unemployment, uh, people will, uh, the, the, the employer will will value that entrepreneurship skills that, that you have because you, it, it shows some kind of a character. It does. And I, would you agree with me? I don't believe in failure. And the only failure is if you stay at your spot don't, you didn't move, you didn't try, you didn't do nothing because you didn't grow as a person, even if you start and you have done everything that you could have done based on the circumstances or the tools you have at that time. You are moving from point A to point B to point C and maybe you're not reaching. Let's say someone who didn't continue to reach, they're not the same person when they started, right? They're not. Definitely. There is growth. So that's Definitely. itself is a win. Right? It's a win. Yeah. It gives you different perspective on things. Mm-hmm. You will think like an entrepreneur when you are employed. You, you're, the way you think, you will be able to understand and relate to your employer. Definitely, it's always a win. Yeah. Even if you're not successful, that journey is it's a learning curve mm-hmm. as important as the education at the university yeah. because it's you're facing reality and, and you learn a lot through that experience. So... Uh, it's not a failure. Even it's if you don't succeed, it, another chance might come along. But yeah. you learn from that. And whatever you do in life, that's what you learn, you're going to apply it. Exactly. Be it on the personal mm-hmm. or the professional, the side. professional side. Speaking of uh, academia and uh, courses, um, what would be your advice in terms of what courses an entrepreneur should consider taking to help him intellectually or her? I think what's important in the education, which is changing fast now in today's world, mm. because the employers, the, the skills requirement mm. for the future is different than on my days. Yeah. I, my advice is for students to be eager about the topics they choose. Mm. Uh, don't just take the mark because I have to take this. Go after your passion yeah. and uh, try to make use not only from the technical side when you're attending class, have that conversation, learn from it. And most importantly, is it's, it's a journey. So it's not like you've taken a course or you graduated and it stops. It's not mechanical. It's not mechanical. It's a lifelong learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, statistics have shown lately, three years with a u- university degree, if you don't continue to evolve, you're obsolete. Yeah. So uh, really have an open mind, always open for communication and getting feedback and learning, learning, learning. You can do it on your own. 
It's mm-hmm. not a, you shouldn't be waiting on the professor or the instructor to feed you with that information. You can do it on your yeah. on your own yeah. and complement that by doing your own. I mean, Take now the ownership. In, ownership and the yeah. internet now is open. Absolutely. I mean, you can learn any topic you want. Yeah. Uh, you have access to any topic. So being eager to learn is very important and evolve. Yeah. Now that you have moved big and you established this company and you are providing many, many training to many professionals out there, I want to ask you if you were to speak to your 23 years old, that fatty who started, what would you tell him? I will say it's good that I've taken that decision back then, though I had an opportunity. I could have, I mean, when I started, I had to let go of a fixed salary that was much higher. My income was higher. I had to downgrade yes. uh, to, to do that. But uh, I look at it, it was an investment. So what I would say is that the most important thing what I've done right was the three major things, actually. One is I followed my passion. Mm-hmm. Second, I treated everybody who I work with with full transparency. Mm-hmm. Uh, very important. And the people who come along with you in that journey you should look at them as your, you will not exist if it was not for those people. So you have to show appreciation to the people who made you who you are and are with you. This is very important. I mean, if I look now, one of our problems now is that I've been people with me for 20 years in the company. That's and sometimes you, you think, okay, there are 20 years, maybe we need a new blood, a new thinking, new things. But then you say those people made you Mm -hmm. and you just push them and you try to help them to learn more look at things differently and they're they're, they're considered family so it's we have uh, we're so transparent in our dealings is that people feel safe and they feel loyal towards us so the major thing is i think is being very transparent in in the dealings Mm -hmm. uh that's what if I look, I've done a good job in that yeah. and follow your passion. And think big. You always have to dream. If you don't dream uh, and you just want to follow, okay, I got employed. Even if you're employed, it's not something bad. Yeah. But you have to think big. You have to be courageous to give ideas, suggest things. It's always that what makes you different. <laughs> The risk is that many students who are, you know, their 20s, it's a busy, busy, busy decade, right? And they're finishing degree, they probably want to establish family, they want to find a career. The message, I guess, is that you are driving this bus. You own your decisions and choices. There are means out there to support you to move forward and to grow. But you, as a person, you are driving this bus for yourself. You can make those decisions. Definitely. If you're not in control. Yeah then you're not going to be a happy person. If somebody else is controlling you, yeah. and we can find thousands of excuses. Absolutely. Why I'm not doing this. I can find thousands of excuses. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you find an excuse so you're not in control, you're not going to be a happy person, whether you're employed or you have your own business, yeah, whether you have money or you don't have you, money. Right? How is that working for you, finding an excuse instead of finding an opportunity? Exactly. And, and, and always, always, always you have to be in control irrespective of where you are. When I say control, I'm not saying to be uh, strict on yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm saying be believing that things, what's happening around you yeah. is because the way you are acting. True. And you change that mindset and things will change. People will adapt to how you act with them. Yeah. And that's how you control yourself and that's how you control your destiny. If you believe you're going to be successful and you act towards that, and you deal with other people on that basis, you will be successful. So control of your emotions, Mm -hmm. control of your mindset, how you think, is very, very important. it, It is the basis. They are holding the pen and they're writing those chapters for themselves. Definitely. Yes. And, and, and uh, your candidates, for example, in Dubai, mm-hmm. they have a great opportunity. We didn't have it. Mm. It's, a, it's a melting pot. So the opportunities here, dealing with multicultural, and I was hearing that you have 189 different nationalities. So rich. That's, yeah. that's by itself 
is a big opportunity where they are interacting with different cultures, different ideas come along, different thoughts. And most of the people who are successful, they started, they've taken the jump, they've believed in their idea, and they've taken control of that. So my advice is that make use of the environment where you are, Mm -hmm. believe in yourself, take the steps, and don't regret it. And okay. Stay open to learning and yes, growing. Yes, definitely. And if you fail, what's uh, what's the big deal? Yeah. You restart. Exactly. Thank you, Fadi. Thank you for being with us. I think I have one more question. I want to know what is your vision now? The next five years, ten years for Morgan. Where are you heading? Okay. So now we are we're present in many places around the world. Mm-hmm. My really honest vision is that uh, I want my. We want to. I don't want to go public. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not something we drive for. I don't want to be under a large corporates. I want to maintain that culture. My vision now is I need to work with my team members uh, for the next two years to grow the the portfolio of our business mm-hmm. and really turn them into partners. At this point, I think in order. So I'm thinking about succession plan and people to have a stake in the company so that it feels that it's their own company. Uh, that's really something I want to accomplish in the next year. Yeah. sense of belonging and ownership. Yes. So really, it's not about controlling and having... It's, I think, by having more people with more ownership within the organization, I think we can expand and grow much faster. Since we started, we have more than 150,000 alumni nice. in the region here. So we have a huge alumni community which we didn't do a good job in maintaining that relationship that's something a project i'm working on Mm -hmm. and what's more interesting is those people are they look at us as a family we did an impact in their life and they're willing to support us in whatever we do and that's something as well a project that we need to work on Thank you so much. I wish you all the best and all the success out there. Thank you for being with us today. It's a pleasure and uh, thank you very much.